My name is Jules Epstein. I'm Associate Professor of Law at Widener University at its Delaware campus where I teach criminal law related courses. I'm here to talk with you today about opening statements in the Jerry Sandusky trial. I want to begin with what an opening statement is and is not. In trials we have closing arguments. They're to tell people why they should believe certain facts. An opening statement is a little bit more toned down. It is a statement of what each side hopes to prove or hopes the evidence will show. It's more, here's the story of the trial, and it's a necessity, as some people call it a road map, uh, or the table of contents to a book, because trials don't always go along smoothly. You get a witness here and a witness there, and you need a big picture to help you frame the whole idea. What can we expect in these closing uh, opening statements? Let me start with the prosecution, which goes first. The prosecution is going to tell a story, a compelling story of repeated assaults of young men. If it has strong corroborating evidence of any or some or all of those assaults, it will give the jury at least a taste of them, letting them know there's more to come, so pay attention, but hey, this isn't just people's stories, we've got some solid backing to it. What can you anticipate from the defense? The defense is going to be raising issues of credibility, are these people believable? Evidence of innocence, claims that said they would say support that this never happened, and an attempt to remind the jury that this was a man of good standing in the Penn State community. Each side is limited to evidence that it legitimately believes will come into play during the trial. And if each side succeeds, it will have done a couple of things. It will have kept people's minds open, and it will have given the jury uh, lenses or a framework in which to view the whole case. 